Michelle Clement here. Again, I'm here with Storm DeSmith. Is that it or DeSmith? It's DeSmith. It's a silent H. DeSmith. Forever. Yep. Also known as the Metabolic Man. I'm metabolic Man. Man. So much easier. Yeah, use that. Yeah, okay. We'll get this. This is our second video, so we don't even really know each other yet. Yeah, but we're learning. Yeah. yeah, we're learning through the GoPro. Last week we touched on squat prep. This week we're working with the Turkish Get Up. So um, if you go back to last week's video, you'll see what we're gonna do after this. Today we're using Turkish Get Ups as a warm up. But what we wanna do is run you through this movement. Typically Storm and I will use it maybe as a, as a warm up, a motor control piece. Um, some days we go heavy to test our strength. This can even be a screening tool. So if you've got clients or you yourself wanna check your range of motion through shoulders and hips, your stability, trunk, shoulder, hip stability, your movement, capabilities, your capacity to learn new things. This is great for a various a variety of reasons, right? Absolutely, yeah. It's such a complex movement. There's so many things, so many like skills and strengths and, and types of stability you need for this that if there's something unstable or something, there's some sort of um, strength issue there, you're gonna know about it when you do a Turkish get up. So I often use it for my clients as a bit of a screening tool once, I, once I, I'm sure they're capable enough of doing it without, without hurting themselves. Perfect, perfect. So today we're basically going to get into it with a, uh, a warm up for you guys. We're going to show you your setup, show you the steps, and then we're just going to kind of play around with it. A bit of fun is always good before you go heavy. Well, hi there. <laughs> <laughs> guys, we're just about to run you through the Turkish get up. So um, basically, I'm, I'm going to go for it in a second and run you through the steps, including the setup, how to get the bell into position, and then also how to transition sides, all the basic stuff. So if you haven't done a Turkish get up before, or you want to neaten it up, here we go. So what I've got here is a 16 kilo. This is probably like a warm up weight, something that you can feel. It's not too light, but something that's not too heavy. Uh, you know, cold shoulders, not going to get a bit upset. 16 kilo is good for myself. Storm's probably going to warm up with 100 kilos because he's boss. At least. I'm too IC, he's boss. <laughs> Basically guys, what we want to see in your setup, so I'm going left handed first, I'm right handed, but I want to get this guy stronger, so I'll do my on my left. So you can see my left heel close to the butt, my right leg and right arm will be out for support. And what we're going to do is imagine this bell's heavy, first of all, fetal position, two hands, and pull him in to my starting position. So here you can see I've got like a figure four, I've got that bell resting on my shoulder between sort of my bicep and pec, and from here, I'm going to go ahead and glue myself to the floor, right palm down. Your first step, guys, and I usually work with breath, so for each step, I'm going to take a big breath in. And step number one is simply press. Step number two is shoot up onto my right elbow. So in that little step there, you're going to see that I'm actually pushing through this foot and I'm reaching through this shoulder. I'll show you once more. So we come back down. Step number one. Press. Now step number two, watch as I lift this shoulder and push through that foot. Okay, and that enables me to get into a position now for step three, which is to simply straighten my arm. Now from here, what we've got to do is we bridge for step four, and I need to now pick up my right leg and place it underneath that kettlebell. So you can see now I'm in a position where I'm in balance. And for, from here, there's two different ways to stand up. Today we're working with a light warm-up weight. So what we can do if you've got good shoulder mobility is pivot through the lead foot and shoulder. And you'll see, I'm gonna change my line of sight about 90 degree, and then I'm gonna pivot my foot and my shoulder. And now I'm in a nice straight line to do my next step, straighten the legs, and finally finish standing tall. Now to get back down, it's just the reverse of all that. So we're gonna and then to the floor and lower. Now one thing, a variation, you saw in the middle there, I've pivoted through the shoulder. Let's imagine now I'm working with a heavy weight. We're gonna go through the same setup. We're gonna press, come up onto the elbow, come up onto the hand, lift our hip high, right, get that knee underneath my shoulder. Now instead, if I'm not cool with moving through my shoulder here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit up and pivot through that leg. So we'll get a shot of that once more. I'm um, from here, down on the floor, I'm literally gonna sit up and pivot through that hip. And now I can stand and feet together. Cool. So that's the Turkish get up. Pretty simple, once you get the hang of it, 
But if you're new to it, actually it's not fucking simple at all. It's one of the most <laughs> complex lifts. But if you're new to it, follow each step and hang out there for a second or two. Follow this video, practice it at home with a light weight, and then go up in weights. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna get Storm. He's gonna try and hit his PB on that 10 pound <laughs> kettlebell. <laughs> we're gonna go through some, yes, yeah, psycho. Come psych, on, psych. Storm, man. We're gonna get a, We're gonna get a slightly heavier weight than this, and he's gonna run you through some variations on the barbell and the dumbbell. Cool, see you in a sec. I think it's uh, worth mentioning about the loads and the rep ranges as well on this. Um, I see so many, so many trainers in the gym just trying to use the Turkish get up as something where they can completely mess their, their clients up. You know, it, it will get your heart rate up, it will burn some calories, but um, I see so many people um, with their trainers with a little, little baby weight like this, right? And all they're doing is basically getting them to get up any way they can. They're doing this, they're pushing through however they can to get it up. I reckon it's much safer to go like quite a, quite a heavy weight um, and we're going kind of for more, I really like to stick around, I don't know about Joel, but I like to stick around more kind of around about the one to maybe three rep uh, range. What do you Definitely. reckon about that? Yeah, yeah. stay within those strength realms. Big, big reason for that is, is the fatigue factor. So if you're lifting a really light weight like this, obviously you don't have to do it correctly. You don't have to have your arm perpendicular to the floor. I can just get up like this, okay? Look how round my back is, how terrible my form is. I can complete the rep. When you've got something like this, you're really forced to do it properly. You really have to fight that against the gravity. And from there, we're always perpendicular, keeping that really nice, strict form the whole way through. So I find it a lot safer, actually, if you kind of hit some more heavy weights, provided that your, your client or, or yourself has a, the mobility uh, abilities to be able to do it. Um, but um, yeah, low reps, decent loads, guys, and really work on the, on the technique and going through the stages that, that Joel just showed you. That's how we normally hold it. From here now we're gonna go bottoms up and perform it in this position here. So some of the benefits here is obviously grip strength, but also that proprioception, the feedback. Um, other benefits, Joel? Oh, you're gonna, you're gonna be stabilizing. So this ties back to your proprioception, but obviously having the bell rest on the outer edge of the arm, it's automatically stabilized. Now if we have to grip and position the bottom up, we need to work a little bit harder on our stabilizers. So predominantly in the shoulder, obviously, you know, your, your forearm, but you're also going to be working a little bit more through the rest of the system just to keep that guy pointing to the roof. So it's a really good one, probably one that you're going to knock the weight in half for this. So I mean, if I've got a 40 kilo Turkish get up, 20 is going to be pretty tough right here. So we're going to see Storm go for it with a 10 kilo. Fingers crossed he can nail this like he's 50 kilo. <laughs> same as before, same steps, just a different grip. So from here, we're up, we're over, and just going through that same movement pattern. And if you drop it, 50 burpees. Let's, oh, <laughs> let's see it. <laughs> That's next week. Yeah. All right. Yeah, beautiful. Right. Nailed it. Okay. So obviously the idea with this here is trying to not just keep your arm locked as always, but from here we really need to keep that bar nice and straight. If you feel like you're kind of Going over to one side, you've got to stop, wait for it, and make sure it's nice and parallel to the floor. All right, here we go. Awesome. Awesome.